Hi guys, Jonathan here again. And this one is really fascinating. So, to put you out of your misery, if you've been wondering what the pistol itself is, this is a Colt 1903 Hammerless. Um, reasonably popular, first half of the 20th century, a concealed carry pistol, 32 ACP, so not particularly powerful. And this one is pretty buried in quite a complex looking contraption. It's actually pretty straightforward. So this was officially known as the remote control pistol. That's what the War Office um, documents refer to it as, or document. And just to cut straight to the chase on this, this is a simple, um, what we might call a Bowden cable, or what's called a Bowden cable. So a um, wound steel casing with a fabric covering, which is, I have to be very careful of because it's fraying quite badly with a control wire, steel wire running through the middle of it, just like your bike brake cables. And then at one end in my left hand, so you would hold this, uh, wear it like a ring on your thumb, and then to fire it, you'd squeeze this lever. If you look underneath, you can see, hopefully there is a, a bright metal trigger bar that goes across the face of this sliding trigger and as I squeeze gently the firing lever, that pivots to the rear and pushes the sliding trigger to the rear, firing the pistol. So it really is quite simple. You'd obviously, you'd make ready by, or load and make ready. There's a space in the bottom to, to load the magazine, which is a heel release uh, magazine, which is actually quite convenient for once. Um, modern, to modernise the, the heel release magazine is not very convenient or ergonomic, but for this it makes perfect sense because you are not going to be reloading it very quickly and it means that the magazine catch is nice and accessible. On the bottom, the housing is designed so that it stops at the frame so that you can pull the slide back without any problems and so that the weapon will function, hopefully without any problems. Now the drawback of this would be a lack of support for, for, a re, uh, for, for the slide coming back and if you don't have adequate support um, you might not have enough energy to cycle the next round and the pistol might stop after one shot which is possibly why the Mark II version of this which is what we have here with, has a longer bigger support plate you could bend to shape to fit your body type and then cinch up the, the webbing waist belt nice and tight so you've got proper support. And it's also then not wobbling around on your body. Um, pretty, pretty concealable under an overcoat or something. And I always think the classic war movie scenario of Handerhock um, would be the perfect surprise use for this to essentially um, cause a distraction, perhaps, you know, seriously wound somebody with, a, with one or two shots from this and then hopefully make your escape. Um, if, you, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you have a very good chance of um, getting the drop on somebody and getting away, I suggest. Uh, so the, the cable would be worn down the sleeve and then you squeeze between th finger and thumb. There is a period photo of this setup we can show you without the coat on. And in that photo, you'll note, you may notice that um, it's actually a Mark I version. <coughs> Of this so this has that very boxy housing the mark one has one that conforms to the trigger guard and the grip of the pistol so more time and effort involved and that was deemed not to be necessary so we believe um, between 40 and 50 of these were ultimately produced and thanks to some excellent research by um, Anders Tigerson uh, who has written, if you head over to smallarmsreview.com, you can find an article, a very good article by him that I'm about to summarise. And he's also got pages on his website, timelapse.dk, on this and lots of other interesting SOE designs. There was a Danish contingent of SOE. And the story that he relates to do with the remote control pistol, and the only incident that we know of involving one, 
is December 1941 and the somewhat ill-fated first mission of the Danish SOE. And this was an airdrop with uh, two, two guys, uh, Carl Johan Brun and Mogens K.A. Hammer. And unfortunately, Brun was killed. They were dropping at a height of 500 feet with no reserve because there wouldn't be time for it to open anyway. And unfortunately, Brun's chute didn't open. So he was killed, uh, putting a serious crimp on the mission as well. Hammer was able to escape uh, with some of the, the stuff they were dropping with, but it, obviously not able to carry enough of it. They were going to be linking up with resistance forces and distribute the stuff they had on them, which included, I think, a dozen conventional pistols and one of these pistols in a package. And then uh, Brun and Hammer would have had one of these each as well. So potentially Hammer got away with the other two. But in any case, the Nazi uh, state police were able to capture on its very first mission one of these remote control pistols, which is pretty unfortunate. Uh, now we have, uh, or Anders has, what the report said, the, the German police report, which is interesting. It says, what we are dealing with is an extremely dangerous gangster weapon which, as far as we know, originates from an, intel an enemy intelligence service. Which, well, you know, Captain Obvious of the German state police there, um, because who else were these guys going to be other than uh, foreign intelligence? The use of the phrase gangster weapon is very interesting because this is, uh, the Nazis did sort of try to smear Churchill with the famous image of him with a Tommy gun and a cigar as a gangster. But the British used gangster gun as, as a derogatory term for submachine guns, automatic weapons in general, things that were concealed, that were sneaky and not gentlemanly. So I always find it interesting when people invoke the gangster comparison. You know, this idea of gen uh, ungentlemanly warfare, as SOE are famously known for. So yes, didn't go very well, but a really fascinating design. Just give you one last look before we stop. Try and give you a bit of a 360 whilst not doing any damage. Very robustly affixed webbing straps with steel plates and very large rivets. So there's no way that that belt is coming undone. And it's a very robust, um, I think it's a Patna 37 webbing belt that's been cut in half and riveted to this steel plate. And then you've got several nuts and bolts and screws holding the pistol in place. So if anyone ever comes across a 1903 Colt Hammerless with suspicious um, marks on the frame, possibly holes, yes, holes where this has all been attached, you might just have yourself an SOE pistol. And just for those of you who not or aren't very familiar with the pistol that's in this rig, here it is. This is a nice early example, serial number 9000 range. Very nicely finished. As time went on and the war, we had two world wars, then the finish would potentially, well certainly the military versions would have a much plainer finish, but this lovely commercial blue, it's very nice. And so how you would reload this in the rig, because you're not taking it out, <clears throat> is the same as you would reload it. Normally you pull down on the heel release, you have to kind of do this as you were holding it. So finger and thumb, push, pull, remove replace. It's a simple blowback design and there's that sliding trigger, very short trigger pull and it has a grip safety. So the grip safety has been disabled in this or is permanently depressed by the way it's mounted. I, we haven't taken this apart to check that detail. Very short trigger pull, quite a light trigger pull. So this, apart from the form factor of this, as it were, it does also lend itself quite well to remote operation. 
So, remote control pistol, not in the unmanned ground vehicle sense of remote operated. Um, you only have what, a meter and a half or something of cable, but pretty imp impressive bit of wartime expedient technology. I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Uh, we'll have one, we have one of these every week, as you've probably gathered. And what you may not have gathered, if you come to us via YouTube, is that there is a something of a, a weekly quiz uh, of the same title as this video, where you can guess what something is. Now, depending on your level of expertise, some of them might be really easy, but the nature of this collection is such that we can usually catch you out, even if it's just a variant of something that you might not have come across, or in this case, it's a very ordinary pistol mounted in a really important, interesting historical setup. Um, we also have an ongoing collaboration with GameSpot over at the GameSpot uh, YouTube channel. Check that out if you're interested. And we've got links in the description for how you can help the museum do what we do. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time.